Cody, Steve Bateman, Rabbitohs Radio. Blake Taffer's appeared on the bench this week. I know you're close mates with him. What does he bring to the team as the utility for this side? I suppose he covers a little bit more positions. Um, obviously, last weekend, um, Renault twins his hemi there, so it would have been perfect to sort of um, have a guy like Blake off the, off the bench, but obviously Braden came on and done a wonderful job as well. Um, but it probably just adds a little bit more, I suppose, um, cover a number of positions, um, you know, this weekend going into the Dragons game. And last week, the Source and Jackson made successful returns. It's good to see them getting some footy and scoring tries for the team. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, obviously, um, I think Source got injured and uh, they both picked up an injury and um, throughout their recovery, um, you know, Tane done, had a, an opportunity to, you know, come onto the wing and he's done a wonderful job there. And, um, you know, Source and Jackson have fought their way back into the side, um, you know, through injury and, um, you know, to get them some game time, obviously not knowing what's coming, you know, over the next couple of weeks, it's sort of hard to, you know, prepare guys to, to you know, play first grade footy if there's no footy um, in reserve grade. Um, so they've, yeah, they've trained really, really well, uh, transitioned back into the first grade squad really, really well. So uh, they've got another, another opportunity this weekend to, um, you know, to play well. And your own form's been pretty good. You're leading the try assists, scoring tries on the left and also on the right. Must be satisfying for you. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I have to credit a lot of, you know, guys on the inside of me. Um, you know, guys like Cookie, uh, Cam Murray when he's that ball player middle. Um, obviously, Adam Reynolds um, creates a lot of space for, you know, myself and and Cook um, and Latrell to, you know, to do our thing on the edge. Um, so, yeah, it's a sort of... Uh, um, you know, every little part has to do their role in 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 the in the play for it to be successful. So, you know, when everyone's doing their job, it's quite easy to you know to throw that last pass. You just mentioned Latrell there. That pass he threw last week was something else, and he he just looks keen at the moment. I couldn't believe it. Eh? I, I I seen him do it, and I just I sort of swore at him. I just said, "You're effed." I was just like, "That's crazy." You know what I mean? Like just to be able to think about that. But <laughs> Latrell's just that type of player that he can produce those sort of things and it's yeah it's I couldn't I couldn't believe it when I seen it to be fair. Cody what was the first thing you did when um you got your freedom pass uh yesterday? Yeah we actually went out for dinner last night uh, which was great. Um yeah it was good good to be out which yeah which is good. Um uh, obviously had a few different things on this morning had media, so couldn't really get out until um, after the media, which I'm going to head down the beach and uh, go for a swim, I suppose. Was it a, a tough period for you guys, like being locked away like that? Yeah, it obviously was, but I, I suppose it's um, the situation ain't as bad as, um, you know, the families. I, I really feel for those guys, um, you know, we probably had training and um, games to look forward to on weekends, which made the, um, you know, made the time go that little bit faster than, um, you know, being stuck in a hotel for, for two weeks. So um, really feel for those guys up there at Surface Paradise and other, you know, families that are doing it in Brisbane and Sunny Coast. I guess you'd probably feel for James too. He, he's a mate of yours and he's gone through a lot recently. Yeah, obviously do feel for him. Um, Obviously, can't really make too much comment on it because, you know, I don't know what his mental health um, situation is at the moment, and it's it's really hard for me to can, you know, to comment on it because I'm not in the situation he's in, and not in the situation that a lot of the families are in. So, um, yeah, but I, I think it'd be really hard to um, you know, cope with those sort of things up up there at surface. Mate, um, uh, sorry. Um, mate, there's been some uh, uh, talk about Anthony Milford uh, coming to South. Um, what do you make of that? Well, I think it's a great signing and um, this is probably all I'll say on it because, um, you know, I feel as though we've, we've still got a lot um, a lot of time left in this year and I don't want to speak about, you know, obviously the future, but I think it's a great club. Uh, it's a, It'll be a great signing for the club to, um, you know, sign a guy like Milford, um, you know, to um, you know, he's obviously a very experienced player. Um, played rep footy at the highest level. Um, 
you know, hopefully he does come. Um, you know, obviously losing Renault is a pretty big loss in our side, but uh, we've still got a job to do this year. And, um, you know, that's obviously in the future and um, that's that's where I'll leave it. Um, as I said, it, it, I'd love for him to be at our club, but uh, I've still got a job to do here. What do you think he'd add to your team um, if, he, if he did come into, the, into your side? Yeah, obviously his experience, um, you know, you know, having a, a pretty, um, I suppose, easy type of role in the team. Um, you know, a lot of that weight will fall on my shoulders to you know, get us around the park a little bit more and um, you know, allow him to play his own game, I suppose. Do you think that Souths uh, could be a good club, a good place for him to kind of get that form back that he's been searching for? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, South is a great club. Uh, we've got a great group of guys here and um, yeah, it'd be a handy addition to us. And now, that, and now that Gags and Adam and also Jaden have, uh, have committed their futures to other clubs now, mate, it's a good, good opportunity for everyone to knuckle down and, and focus on that one goal, mate. Yeah, that's for sure. And, um, you know, all that talk can sort of stop now. Uh, the guys have made their decision, you know, and it's probably in the best interest of their family and they've, you know, made their decision and we're all you know, happy for them. Um, obviously, um, you know, it's sad to see them go, but um, obviously our job now turns into um, trying to make it a, the, the best possible send-off uh, we can for those guys because they've been at the club for a number of years now. Um, done a great job um, you know, in the thing. Hey, Cody, just on... Adam, how's he, mate? Is he looking likely for this weekend with his, with his hammy? Yeah, I, I think he, he'd be okay. Um, he trained a little bit the other day. Um, still got a bit to get through uh, tomorrow for captain's run, but everything's looking likely. And, mate, just on a different note, um, we, we part of the meeting with Andrew Abdo earlier this week in regards to an Indigenous side for the World Cup. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, there's obviously... Um, I had a chat about that um, early in the week, and it was just a about the risks involved in, in taking a side over um, to the World Cup. And um, it was obviously a pretty good meeting. Um, and if the opportunity, you know, does come up to, um, you know, for it to take us Indigenous side over to the World Cup, I'm, I'm certainly putting my hand up to be a part of that. What's your gut feel, mate? Was was Andrew supportive of it? Or how do you walk away from that meeting feeling about it? Because obviously the NRL is in a bit of a spot there. Like they've... Said no to the or the ARLC said no to the Kangaroos. So, what was your gut feel after that meeting? I think they just outlined all the all the risks um, it, it'll take to to take a team over there um, with all the quarantines and everything like that, and the risk of infection over there. And um, yeah, I'm not sure. We, we'll we'll see what happens over the next couple of days. I think there's a another meeting with the international board about um, whether the uh, um, whether the World Cup will be postponed or not. So, um, obviously, we'll just wait and see and, and see what happens. So, last one, man. Do you, after those risks are sort of explained to you, and obviously there's plenty of talk about COVID and whatnot, like, were you, would you still feel comfortable going over there? Like, from what was explained to you, how, how do you personally feel about it? Yeah, as I said before, you know, if there's an opportunity to take a, an individual side in the World Cup, I'm, I'm more than happy to put my hand up and, and play. It's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be a part of something like that. Cody, with, with um, Cam out this week, mate, a good opportunity for Jai Arrow, mate, to, to jump in at 13, mate, and get some minutes out, eh? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it was good to, you know, for him to get some minutes over the weekend and, um, you know, getting into training this week and, and getting some some Ks in a leg, which, is, which has been great, and um, just to get him back in that routine, um, which will be good. And how's his attitude uh, uh, the last couple of weeks, mate? He must be must have been looking forward to getting out there against the Warriors last week. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, the situation that he was in, he, he couldn't be around the team and everything like that, but he came out in, in high spirits and um, he played a wonderful game with, with limited, um, with next to no training. Cody, any uh, word on your future? Any, any thoughts there? Any process there going on? No, nah, none at all, mate. Um, I think I've, you know, I've got another year left here, and um, obviously put that on the back burner at the moment when we've, you know, got a goal in in, in mind uh, to finish the year on a on a really good high, and 
you know, hopefully that's a premiership. Um, you know, we'll, we'll work towards that before um, you know, worrying about my future. And sounds, uh, like your short -term beach, uh, short, sounds like your short-term future is off to the beach, mate. Eh? That's it. And Co Cody, there's, um, obviously with Penrith and Melbourne playing this weekend, what, one of them's going to lose and there's an opportunity for you guys to climb into the top two. How, how important is this game? And also, mate, what do you know about young Jaden Sullivan who you're going to be going uh, up against? Yeah, it's obviously a, a great opportunity for us to um, you know, go into the top two side. But if you start focusing on on that sort of stuff, you start, you know, losing your your focus on on the game at hand. Um, you know, we've got a job to do this weekend against the Dragons, who who have named an, a pretty unpredictable uh, lineup. So that, that that creates quite a danger to us, as um, in terms of you know not being able to, uh, I suppose, game plan them in a way where um, we know their movements in defence and attack. So uh, that creates a bit of a danger. Um, but yeah, I've, I've watched Jaden Sullivan play over the last couple of years, and um, he's got you know a fantastic skill set. Uh, watched him in the knockout a fair few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, just showed his toughness in in playing in a in a knockout. Um, I think it might have been semi final or grand final back then at at seventeen or eighteen years of age. I think it may have been. But um, to be able to you know play in you know knockout games at, at that young is 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 pretty impressive and. Um, probably need to be on our game in, in, in defence to, to try to shut, shut him down. Yeah, I think he led the um, the Black Cockatoos to, to the win in the in the knockout a um, couple of years ago. And Tyrell Sloan, do you know do you know those young guys? Obviously, young uh, up and coming Indigenous stars. Yeah, I've, I heard a lot about them. Um, I actually played against Jaden and the, the South Coast Box, uh, Black Cockatoos in in the in the knockout. They actually won. They actually. Um, be able to see out in the semi-final, which is, uh, we won't talk about that too much. But, yeah, obviously they've got big futures um, at, at the Dragons. Um, you know, Tyrell debuted a few few weeks ago and um, you can just tell how athletic he is and the speed he, he possesses is, is quite dangerous. So, again, as I said before, they've, um, they're pretty, uh, their skill set's pretty, pretty impressive. So, defensively, we need to be on. Sweet. Thanks, mate. Hey, Cody, it's just Connor from Channel 7, Rockhampton, mate. I'm um, just wondering, do you have any connection, albeit loose, with Rocky or Central Queensland? And um, how keen are you and the boys to, to get up here and, you know, be a part of the first premiership game uh, in Rocky? Yeah, look, um, I played a lot of reserve grade up there uh, with the East Tigers. And um, back in, I think it might have been 20... My twenties, I played my first um, NRL trial at, at, at Rocky for the Gold Coast Titans, which was um, it was great to be a part of, and um, played a number of zero grade team, um, games there, and got a cousin living up there now. So um, yeah, obviously being a part of uh, the first ever premiership winning game is is something to be pretty proud of, and um, taking the game out to to country areas to. Um, to showcase our skills is, is pretty pretty great to be a part of. Cheers, mate. And south of that, a few former Rabbitohs from that area, mate. Dave Taylor, Jamie Simpson, just to name a few, mate. Yeah, we do. Um, I think Jamie Simpson still lives up there, if, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he does. Uh, yeah, obviously getting back there and getting the red and green out um, on Barlow Park, which would be great. Is it Barlow Park yet? Yeah? Oh, no. uh, it's, uh, it's Brown Park. Brown Park. Sorry, guys. That's right, mate. You'll be forgiven. 